I'm back in the carport and that can only mean one thing. I've got a new project I'm working on. Actually, it's not a new project. I'm gonna take what I learned from my first solar shower and put it into a second version. Let me show you what I did. I was able to salvage the uh, ABS pipe that I used off of my first solar shower. Use the ABS pipe, it's, according to the research, it's safer than PVC. Still, I'm not drinking out of it and I don't recommend that you do either. The fittings that you'll need for my design, two four inch end caps, a 45 degree, a three way that has four inches and then two inches up here. This converts it for an inspection port or inspection plug and then you've got the inspection plug here i also have a two inch o-ring in case i need that for a good seal as far as other pieces i've got a half inch spigot here and then this is a copper washer that goes on the back with a rubber o-ring and then we have a schrader valve the same ones that you use for your tires i've got some silicone here and i've also got some two-part epoxy that i'll be using so since I salvaged this from my last solar shower, I'm gonna go ahead particularly and make sure that it's sanded off really well around the edges so that there's no uh, rough burrs or anything sticking out. Also, I'll sand here along the side to give the silicone something to bite onto. I'll do the same thing on the inside of the connectors here, and that way it'll create a stronger bond. I'm gonna put a hole right in the center of the four inch cap. That's for the spigot to go through. I'm using a three quarter inch bit to do that. The reason I use a three quarter inch hole is because it's the exact diameter of this. I like to be threading it through the plastic as I put it down in there. Put a little bit of silicone on the threads and I'll thread it through. I need to put a hole in the top of the inspection port for the Schrader valve. I'm going to use a 3 8 drill bit but check your valve it may be a different size. Just to be on the safe side I'm using this two-part epoxy to go ahead and do the seals between the fittings. You know, nothing would be worse to get it all together and to have there be a leak somewhere or a weak connection. As I couldn't find one of these 45 degrees that was male on both sides, or I couldn't find one of these that was female then male, I've got to put a little four inch coupler here to join the two together. I had a little bit of epoxy left and I wanted to be safe rather than sorry. So I put some epoxy around the back of the Schrader valve and then around the back of the spigot there. This is what the shower itself looks like. We've got the end cap there, the three way with the inspection port here and then the 45 degree angle going down. Once the spigot dries, I'll get some more epoxy put it around here and put the last piece on. I run some of the two-part epoxy the whole way around the outside. Then I'm going to go ahead and slip it on here, get it lined up, and I'll use a rubber mallet to knock it on. One of the things I'm excited to try for this one is I bought a connecting hose for a washing machine. So I can just let water straight in. It's already pressurized to fill up the tank. So that's one way to fill it up is through that. The other way, of course, you could pull off the inspection port here and fill it in. If you fill it up through the port, now you've got to get air pressure with the system. Of course, you could stop at a gas station and use their tire inflator. I carry a little battery powered one that I can use to inflate that as well. But there's something to understand about this you're really not compressing the water. Water doesn't compress that well. So what you're doing is you're compressing the air around the water. In order for it to work, really you need about equal amounts of air and equal amounts of water. But you don't want to give up all that space in here, filling it half with air. I'd rather fill the whole thing with water so that I have water when I need it. It got me thinking, what about a separate air tank? And guess what? I've already got one mounted on the roof. My spare tire can act as an air tank. What I did is I purchased a short length of hose that's used with air compressors that had threaded fixtures at each end, put threaded female Schrader valves on both ends, and I'll connect one to the spare tire and one to the shower. 
This way I'm maximizing the amount of water that goes in the shower and I'm using this as an auxiliary tank to supply the air pressure. The spare tire PSI is set at 60 and so that's moved into the tank and I get quite a bit of distance with that amount of pressure. In order to mount the shower, I put this add-on on here. Just bent this at 45 degrees and then use the 45 degree connector. It runs the whole length of the rack and that'll give it a lot of support because that water is heavy. We don't want it bouncing around and causing any damage while I'm driving. Something else I've built into the roof rack for this situation is this pull-out shower curtain. And so this back here slides out. Cola seu copo no meu. A gente já se envolveu. Sei que ainda não é meu. Mas quem dorme contigo sou eu. Te deixo com vontade. Falo sacanagem. Ainda faço massagem. Sabe que é verdade. Cola seu copo no meu. A gente já se envolveu, sei que ainda não... I use a lightweight awning tarp and some bungees to hold that in place.